Hi guys, Gabi from UiPath Hacks here. If you are watching this, chances are you are an API developer or are planning to become one. In this video, I will propose a learning path to quickly ramp up your machine learning knowledge, one that I have taken myself already, and also go through the integration points of ML and UiPath. The VP of Artificial Intelligence at UiPath, DP Singh, stated in the UiPath DevCon in 2019, quote, almost every CIO wants to have AI and ML in their enterprise, but the real world deployment footprint of the AI is that 96% of the CIOs have not deployed any AI in their enterprises, end of quote. The shocking mismatch between management presentations loaded with buzzwords in most companies and real life. In this video, I'm proposing four courses and specializations that I have completed myself that will give you a solid introduction and hands-on experience with machine learning, as well as help you build already a small portfolio of projects that you can share with your current or maybe future employer. If you're looking for change and maybe an entry position as a data scientist or machine learning engineer. The first one and the most comprehensive of the four as well as the most expensive one is the machine learning engineer from Udacity. The nano degree has been revamped from what I did back in 2018. And back then it was a five months long course with 15 hours of study per week. And I think uh, there were a good number of additional projects as well, but still the value added by this nano degree was really high and I, I was provided a very good overview of all main areas of machine learning, completing at least one project in all these areas, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, deep learning, as well as reinforcement learning. It is a bit pricey. It's three months now and they do have an offer right now, 15% uh, off. So it will come up to about 618 euros right now. I think it was a bit more expensive when I did it, but I still think it's a very good deal. Um, it will give you a real good overview of machine learning and um, not just theory, but also hands-on practice. And you have access to uh, mentors. Um, it's not fully online. Uh, you can chat with them and get feedback on your projects, how to improve them and so on. So it is an investment in both money and time, but I think it's really worth it. So the second course I wanted to share with you is um, actually kind of a prerequisite course and not as much an um, uh, AI or ML course. It is a Python course. It's called Python for Everybody Specialization. It's offered by Coursera uh, by University of Michigan. Uh, I did this pretty much in the beginning and um, I found it really useful. It is actually a set of five courses. Programming for everybody, Python data structures, using Python to access web data, using databases with Python and then the capstone. The capstone is like a, a big project that you have to do in the end to finalize, to finish the whole uh, specialization. So this is very hands-on a very real life scenario. Um, so if you need to brush up your Python skills a bit, or even learn Python from scratch, I can recommend this. It takes about 77 hours to complete. I added up all the hours required for the five courses. And if you can do two hours per day, every day, this means about six weeks to complete this Python specialization. If you're not really confident about your Python skills, you should probably start with this course or something similar before taking up uh, the other machine learning courses. 
The third course I would really like to recommend is the deep learning specialization on Coursera as well from Andrew NG. If you have done something with machine learning, you probably know the name. He's a quite a big name in, uh, in machine learning. This specialization is also comprised of five courses. Actually, this is the, the neural networks and deep learning is the course one out of the five. If we go to the deep learning specialization, we will find here all the courses. So neural networks and deep learning, um, improving deep learning neural networks, structuring machine learning projects, convolutional neural networks, and sequence models. And if we count up all the hours required by this, it, we get to 79 hours to compete. So again, if you do about two hours per day, you end up with uh, around six weeks of study. So if you want to dig deeper and get a better understanding of neural networks and deep learning, this course is a classic and is highly recommended, not just by myself, but by I think anybody else who has done it before. And the fourth course I want to bring to your attention is the executive data science capstone or actually specialization at uh, Coursera. This last course just gives an overview of what it requires uh, to lead a, a data science team. And even if you not actually lead one, it's very interesting to understand what are uh, the roles in a data science team and therefore project, how is the interaction between the team members uh, and so on. So um, yeah, just good to understand the roles and the dynamic of the data science team and these courses will give you a very good insight into the mechanics and dynamics of the whole uh, team. It takes about 21 hours to complete, so you could be done with it in, let's say, less than two weeks. Uh, it's offered by the Johns Hopkins University. And yeah, this is the first, or this is one of the courses, but if we go to the specialization to see all the five courses, we have them here at a, a crash course in data science, then building a data, data science team, managing data analysis, data science in real life, and executive data science capstone. So kind of a culminating project to wrap up um, the whole specialization. Yeah, so these were the four courses I wanted to recommend. And then we will speak also about uh, NLP, uh, so natural language processing. And I've linked here to the NLP TK, so Natural Language Toolkit website or book online. This is a free book. It's again a classic. It's very good. You can just access it as the at the nltk.org slash book link and just go through the book. It's really handy. It will give you an understanding of what NLP is about as well as uh, real your skills with uh, Python as well. So just go through the book. And um, now let's move closer to UiPath. UiPath already offers some AI activities, more in this direction of NLP, as well as computer vision. So we have the UiPath Cognitive Activities Package, and um, I've already created a movie about the Microsoft Text Analysis activity, how to use uh, NLP in UiPath, uh, for example, to get the sentiment of customer comment on your website or our portal or uh, social media. Uh, so I will link to that video that you can, uh, you can watch as well. So basically UiPath offers here API calls for Microsoft Azure, for Google, for Stanford, NLP, and IBM Watson. So you can just uh, use the activities as, uh, as we've seen in the previous video and feed it a text or comment, let's say, coming from your customers and get the sentiment, for example, if that's a positive or negative comment. You can also do some translations. I didn't really test that, but uh, it should work. Yeah, so you can basically use very comfortably these services in your UiPath workflow. The next integration point um, between UiPath and machine learning uh, is in the area of computer vision. And again, here I've done already a video on this topic um, where I was comparing uh, some 
computer visual activities with the classical ones like uh, clicking or getting uh, text or uh, checking if an element exists or typing into. And uh, we've seen there how computer vision helps us interact with elements uh, which are not really visible to, to the standard your path selectors. Uh, for example, PDF files or um, any virtual environments like remote de desktop connection or VMware or Citrix uh, and so on. Uh, where Or maybe some websites where uh, some content is seen as a picture. The UiPath computer activities can actually get the picture, send it to an engine. That engine will uh, identify the elements in that picture and label them and feed them back to the UiPath workflow. So in some cases where the classical UI path selectors fail, this is the way to go. And it's a, it's a quite good and fairly stable way uh, already from what I've seen myself. So if you're interested in this topic, uh, I will link to that to the video I made on UI path and computer vision activities and just yeah have a look there and uh, let me know what you think about it. So we've seen now two areas uh, where your path integrates with ML, uh, the NLP area and the computer vision one. But what can you do if you want more? So if you just want to run a machine learning model that you have uh, developed maybe yourself or reuse one and get some intelligence or insight into your workflow, maybe uh, help it make some decisions. In that case, you can of course use and integrate with any Python uh, script and here as well I've made the video already I will link it in the description below or maybe somewhere uh, on screen and if you need some heavy lifting done with Python uh, you can do it you can build your your Python script and then you can get parameters and this is the, the interesting part where you get parameters from your path get arguments from your path you do your heavy lifting inside the Python script and then you feedback the result to UiPath, to the UiPath workflow. Uh, this works quite nicely. I've demonstrated in my video an example of getting a house price uh, with linear regression based on 13 features, 13 input features that will then drive that price. I've been using the Boston housing data set from 1970 to train that linear regression model. And uh, now we just feed it some parameters the model runs in Python and feeds back to the UiPath workflow the result, the house price in our case. Yeah, so it's quite interesting, it's quite fun to play with. If you have been developing some machine learning models, it's nice to integrate them with UiPath, with the UiPath workflow. You might need to make some very slight adjustments to the Python script, I have everything in a, in a method that you can then call from um, path I will not speak too much here about that because you can see all the details in the previous video that I'm linking here. So this sums up the machine learning courses and the integration points I wanted to point out with uh, your path. If you have already some more experience in this area I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Yeah and if you found this useful please click the like button it will help this video get to a wider audience. That being said Thank you and see you soon. Hey guys, if you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so you won't miss out on future content. Thanks.